Hey, what's up, Husker Nation? My name is Logan Merrick, and this is Husker Central. If this is your first time here and you're a Husker fan, glad to have you. Today, got a special guest with me. It's Coach B.A. We're going to be discussing everything we saw with UTEP real quick, but we want to dive into this Colorado, Colorado rivalry. That's hard to say. Um, we're going to do that coming up right now. All right, so as I said, joining with me is Coach B.A. If you don't follow him on Twitter, he's a great follow on Twitter. I will say that. And he's also got a YouTube channel, and I wanted to make sure that I shared uh, all of my awesome subscribers with him because he is a great follow there as well. He breaks down a lot of film, and that's why I wanted to bring him on. Coach, thanks for coming on with me, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is a big honor for me to be on this channel, so I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Hey, so UTEP, you were at the game. I was doing the live stream here. Uh, tell me what the atmosphere was like in the stadium. So I have to be completely real with you. I've gone to a lot of Husker games over the last, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years, right? Yep. That was as loud of an atmosphere for a group of five opponent as I can ever remember. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm expecting this, you know, Colorado game and like Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Like I'm expecting those to maybe be, but like for, I know it was a season opener, but for it being UTEP, there was a couple times I was blown away, like when we got the false start and then they had to burn a timeout right after that. I remember just looking around at the people around us like, this just feels different. Like, <laughs> this just, the atmosphere felt different. That was, it kind of blew me away just because, I mean, again, no disrespect, but it was UTEP. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you, like I, I was at Northern Illinois last year. It was a night game. Yeah, that was fun, but it wasn't like, that it was just it was different i feel yeah. like the atmosphere in lincoln was different this last saturday and that that got me excited in and of itself you know what i mean yeah do you do you think that it had anything to do with the fact that we actually have a real quarterback now i think so do you want the <laughs> truth i i think it's a oh so i actually got a cool uh i got a cool video um i was sitting like right in the seventh row of the south end zone and i got a video a video like right at the video board whenever they announced, you know, the starting lineup. I saw that. Obviously, Dylan got like the loudest cheer, but I wasn't expecting it to be that much louder, if that makes sense. Like yeah. if you would have told me, oh, Dylan's going to get the loudest cheer, I'd be, oh, that makes sense. But like for it to be that much louder than everyone else, I was like, oh boy, we got a player here. We yeah. got a player. Yeah. yeah, every every I saw that video. Everyone like erupts like crazy. Yeah. And, and uh yeah, man, I, if I could have seen it, I probably would have done the same thing. Cause I mean, yeah. and then, and then, all right, so let's just get into the game. I, I've got to ask this because I can tell you on the stream, um, all of us Husker fans have PTSD, right? So anytime mm -hmm. something goes wrong, so they score that touchdown, right? Then, yeah. um, Dante Dowdell fumbles in the yeah. stadium was there anyone else feeling that same PTSD feeling of like, here we go again? Or was it like, nah, there was a lot of positivity? I think it, at least the people around me, it felt a little bit 50 50. Okay. I was, I was kind of in the track of, yes, I know this is PTSD, but like, it's just one. It's just one. Like, I, I was commenting on someone's live stream the other day and they were kind of talking bad about, you know, the fumble or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I get that terrible timing, but like, were we really expecting an entire season with zero fumbles? Like, yeah. that's just a little unrealistic. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. trust me, I also understand the other sentiment by some of the other people that was sitting around, like, oh my, what? Again, it's like the scene from The Water Boy was like, oh no, we suck again. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's kind of what some of the people around me kind of sounded like. But I'd say at least the people I was around, it was kind of 50 50. I was kind of more on the track of it's just one, it's just one, it'll be yeah. okay. Yeah. I, I, and, then, and then that safety happens, and that safety happened like right in front of me. And that place, eat, eat, when the referee finally put his hands up for that safety, you know, they kind of had to talk it through. Yeah. That yeah. place erupted. Well, I will tell you, so there is a guy in our chat. His name is Jake, um, just a good dude in the chat and, and hanging out. And he called the safety. He was like, I'm not stressed. Defense is about to get a safety right here. And I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. Don't think it'll happen. And like, again, just I'm not typically a negative person. You can watch my channel. I'm not really like I'm I'm high on that rule. Like, but oh, yeah. it just felt like that in that moment, it was like, oh my God, are we really going to like, no, I hear you I, like, as, as positive as I was trying to be, I'll be like, there is still that part of my brain. That's like, because I'll tell you one of the worst experiences of my life as a Husker fan, I was at the Georgia Southern game. 
I traveled that <laughs> I I traveled that morning. It's still the one and only Husker game my wife has I've been with my wife since I was 15 years old. It's the only game my wife's ever attended. And that's we, the last we, one she gets to attend. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, she has she has not been back. We traveled like we woke up that morning. We traveled about four hours from where I live up to Lincoln. And yeah, so like there's still that memory that I have oh, in my head. And I won't yeah. say I was like quite there, but you know, I, I do. There is part of my brain that was kind of in that same of like, oh God, oh God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so like when we're looking at the UTEP game, give me like your three biggest, like this team is different. And I know I'm putting you on the spot. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, and if and if you want me to kind of go first, I can go first. Oh, um, I, I, I can get some for you. All right, all right, go for it. Okay, one. This is kind of a cop out, and it's the easiest answer, but it's the quarterback, right? <laughs> How many times did we see that quarterback just look? It's like when's the last time that we were throwing multiple deep balls down the field? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like that was the explosive passing game, obviously. But I feel like that's kind of an easy answer. Okay. The yeah, other kind of. I would say so. Going going to your point, like yeah. I think that the thing that made it so refreshing that they could take those shots was last year we everyone knew we didn't have a quarterback. So what they do just stack the yeah. box and dared us to throw, right? A hundred a hundred percent. And like so, I'll tell you not to like cut you off, but like no, you're good. I've done I've done a couple of film breakdowns from like last year on my thing, and obviously I threw in like some of the really big touchdowns that like Harburg threw last year, right? But I yep. have to say, like all respect to Harburg, that like if you go look at those. I think every single big touchdown I broke down on my page was because the defense was so keyed in on the run. Yep. Like you can look, I'm like, there was one, uh, it was the Fedoni touchdown. I think uh, I can't, I can't remember who it was against, but Fedoni had a big touchdown last year. I'm like, look, these three guys are not covering a soul because they crashed so hard on the run. That's not going to happen. Like that's the thing is UTEP wasn't doing that, but we we're still able to complete those passes. If that makes yep. sense. Yep. We can do it based on just us doing our job, not the defense not doing their job. 1,000%. All right, what's your other two? My other two would be, I kind of didn't think about this until like the probably Monday or Tuesday, but thinking about like who are going to be our star like wide receivers, like it's crazy to think that like a lot of those wide receivers that we had last year are like sitting the bench this year. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I obviously knew that, but like it kind of hit me. And then I listened to like Matt Rule's press conference and then it really hit me. It's like, wow. Like I'll give a shout out to NBNR. They were talking about like how much fun was Harburg throwing to Bullock in the fourth quarter of a blowout as opposed to the game on the line. Yeah. And you when you say, I mean? uh, so when you, you referenced uh, no block, no rock. So, yep. so for people that don't know when he's, when he was saying NBNR, like oh, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's who he's talking about. Another great podcast. Um, I'll also put them down in the description. You're right. And, and you know, what also showed me is like last year, I was so impressed with Jalen Lloyd. And then you saw him this game, he had no catches and they were, he was thrown to twice and he was thrown. They, they double covered him. And he could have come up with that last pass that it was thrown to him, but he got alligator arms, and he yeah. he was not going to uh, you know accept that blow, and that's fine. You make a you make a business decision in that moment for that one play when it's already a blowout anyway. That, that's kind of my thing is maybe if it was a closer game, it's like, eh, but it's like you don't want to be taking unnecessary shots up yeah. thirty something yeah. points, you know. Yeah. Um. So your third, what's your third one? My third one is go, and I understand it's you, Tep, but you're gonna have to hear me out. Was situationally how good our defense was doing. Yep. So one of the uh, one of the fil film breakdowns I did was I the third down screenplay, like for third and 10, third and long, or whatever it was, third and long, that screenplay, like we had three players instantly recognize screen to go make that tackle. Yep. And I know that seems like a little thing. And although last year our defense was outstanding, right? They're not going to hear an argument from anyone in the country that Nebraska defense wasn't fantastic. Except Colorado. Well, fair enough, but I'm not including the, I'm not including those idiots, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, but um, like, although the defense was really good, like you can make an argument that situationally sometimes they didn't do. You know, sometimes you yep. really need to make a big play, or it's like, hey, it's third and eleven. We just gave up a twelve yard gain. Like, yep. Yep. what are we doing? You know what I mean? So yep. things in the defense, and I, I understand it's UTEP, but I saw a lot of things in that UTEP game. That can that will transfer over and carry over to other opponents, such as like 
understanding the situation. Hey, it's third and long. I just Nash Hutmacher. I just got not blocked. Like a, a guard and a center just let me through. Yeah. Something's probably up here. You know what yep. I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I the gang tackling to continue to see that we saw it last year. Yeah. I feel like our secondary has gotten better at tackling. Mm-hmm. They were already a good tackling team, but oh, yeah. but uh, you saw some open field tackles. One of the things that really I really liked about this UTEP game. Multiple times I watched corners get wide on the field to force guys back in on those screens yes. so they could yes. gang tackle, which many times last year you saw when they would break down at the end of games, it was guys mm-hmm. that would over pursue, not break down, and guys yeah. would just go around them and then they would yeah. they would get long, long uh completions like you're saying yeah. or touchdowns. Yeah. So last year Tommy Hill did a really good job of that, but like outside of him. Not yep. so much, but I agree with you. Like we saw it from pretty much everyone this last Saturday. Yeah, I, I'll go quickly on this, and then we'll get to Colorado. My my three was my my biggest one is that how many times last year, if we would have gotten second and thirty, and this is just last year. This is as long as I can remember. You getting second and thirty, that drive is done. Like we're not we're not miles. going anywhere. And to know that like Riola just has confidence, man. The dude just in, in the words of Pat McAfee. He oozes machismo, like like the dude is just yeah. like a, a, a stud, and so he didn't he didn't waver, and I don't feel like our offense wavered at all. Like they all walked with confidence, and some of that has to do with you got two NFL caliber studs on the outside that are like, I just give me the ball. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so so that would be one that really just goes. All right, this team is different. The other one is I was already high on the offensive line. I've got a video about it, how I broke down how the offensive line isn't as bad as Husker fans were making them out to be last year. Hundred percent. I'm with you on that, by the way. Uh, but you saw that inside zone run, and again they were stacking the box last year, so it's hard to run. The, but that inside zone run was was chef's kiss this yeah. like i mean yeah. you just saw you and i you know i'm almost 40 years old i could have ran some of those touchdowns in on touch man. like they were, they were just right? blowing right? holes like up. That, that split zone right at the beginning of the game right down by the goal line we could yep. drive a truck through that thing. <laughs> yeah. and, <laughs> and micah micah Makuza or uh mazuka that that dude is just a mauler like mm-hmm. i watched i watched the game now three times and i I couldn't get enough of just watching him maul people. And 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 last year we could not we couldn't have a uh, a guard or a tackle kind of boot around that moving guard. Uh every time they would they would just whiff. And yeah. you saw it multiple times whether it's Justin Evans Jenkins or Mizuka, like they were they were coming around and they were just blowing us up. And I was like that is a beautiful thing. And then the third one uh, would be for me to say this is a different team is exactly what you just said for your last one. Uh, our defense is seeing the game, and I feel like it's slowing things down. And everyone's going to go, well, they gave up two big bombs. The other one could have been caught for a touch. And it's like, dude, th- all right, first off, those things are going to happen. I feel like yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Malcolm Hartzog just panicked. He was actually in good good position in that play oh, yeah. where he gave up the touchdown. He panics. And he gets tripped up and he falls. And then the yeah. other one uh, is Sire, what um, the new guy from USC. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. also tripped. And you see what yeah. happens. Like like those things happen in football, man. Your feet get tied up. Right. Like you can't you can't just go. Well, th- th- these guys stink. It's like no, we've got too much experience back there for bad blown coverages. If that makes sense. Uh, yeah, hundred percent, a hundred percent. I agree with you completely. So let's get into Colorado. You and I are both on Twitter. Um, by the way, for those of you guys who used to follow me on Twitter, I had to delete mine a year, uh, back over the winter time, um, and had to restart it cause I could not get back into it. So I've got a new, a new Twitter. It's uh Husker central TV. If you want to follow me there, um, coach BA, what's your, what's your Twitter, your tr- the X Twitter handle, whatever <laughs> at the BA coaches show. Okay. Um, so you and I are seeing Colorado. You had a live stream for the Colorado game. Yeah, yeah. And I watched that. It was really good. Um, So we're looking at Colorado fans just talk absolute trash, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And I will will say this, and I told this to you before we got on, uh, Colorado fans have to be the shallowest. Either either they just troll on purpose 
or they have a low football IQ or it's both. And I'm going to go with both. And, and you guys can get all up in the comments if you want. Uh, feel more than free. That only helps uh, the algorithm and people find this video more. So go right ahead. But when you watched Colorado, what stood out to you that you were like, okay, first off, I will say this. I think Colorado is better than last year in some ways. And in other ways, I feel like they're actually worse. Mm -hmm. So where do you, when you watch the game, you go, okay, I see improvements here. But I also see some major things that 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 Nebraska can take advantage of. I thought defensively, Colorado looked terrible. I agree, and I I don't think they were very good last year. But I was watching that game like because that's the thing is yes, it was North Dakota State, but also like if you look at all the experts' opinions, this isn't like a typical North Dakota State team that like yep. they're expecting to go dominate. Right now, they're still going to be a good enough team. Who knows? They could end up making their way into that FCS, you know, discussion. But like this isn't a dominant team like I think we've seen in the past from them. So that was kind of alarming to me, especially the play action pass. Like Colorado had no answer other than let's just blitz the crap out of this and hope the quarterback doesn't get the throw off. <laughs> they completely abandoned the middle of the field. Yep. Which was, I don't know. That was, that was a little bit surprising to me. I'll be honest with you. Like they yeah. completely abandoned the middle of the field. So I'm ex hopefully we can take advantage through dig routes, through crosser. I love to see Fedoni on a crosser this week. That'd just be beautiful. Um, speaking of, speaking of Fedoni. Okay. So, so you, when you're talking about those digs across the middle mesh routes, all that stuff that yeah. the last couple of years we've not been able to do, it's like, for whatever reason, we've not had a quarterback that can actually throw that. Well, Casey Thompson was, was good about yeah. the deep ball and could throw those. Um, but outside of him, it's been just absolutely atrocious. And so, yes, being able to take advantage of the middle of the field, I'm really excited about, but speaking of Thomas Fedoni. I was listening to Damon Benning and he said, because I'm like, what the world, what in the world are we throwing to him? That that little kind of uh screen thing that he actually goes backwards every time and didn't really do anything. I'm like, why are we doing that? He's big, right? Like, let's take advantage of that. Let's do that kind of Rob Gronkowski tight end seam route. Like, why yeah, are we yeah, doing yeah. that kind of stuff? And Damon Benning said, just know they're setting everyone up for some big things because there's okay. a lot of stuff that can go off. I'll be re I'll be real with you. I had not heard. I love Damon Benning. I hadn't heard him say that yet. So like, I just hadn't heard that. So I'll say spot on. That's exactly how I feel as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, I'm not going to give anything away. Just know yeah. like, uh, and so that gets me excited because my, okay, my so son. He, yeah. Yeah. So my, sorry to cut you off, but like, I keep, I keep seeing the same sentiment on Twitter about that and i'm like i hear you it was also like remember it's week one and for the most part we dominated a lot of that game yeah fedoni ran some seam routes last year fedoni ran some cross routes last year that had some success so do you think that we would just completely abandon that for the whole season my vote <laughs> my vote my vote is no now yeah, yeah. i can good come point. to good my, point if we're having this discussion in a month from now then i understand it but i'm like it's week one like I don't know. That's just kind of my thought process of it is like, yeah, it, it, our offense was very vanilla. Well, and, and David Benning said it wasn't just vanilla. It was like homemade vanilla. Like it was right, really, right, really, right, really right. vanilla. So yeah, I, it's true. It was just one of those things where I'm like, please tell me, cause I was really, really hard on uh, Marcus Satterfield last year. And, and mm -hmm. the, some of it is you have to go back and go, dude had no receivers, no running backs and no quarterback. Like, how are you yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to call a game when you've got no offense, right? Um, so I get that. I'm just like, man, sometimes I feel like college football and pro football coaches, they they like outwit themselves and they try to get too cute with things. And it's like, dude, just do the thing that works. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so, yeah, but yeah. you but everything you're saying is spot on. Um, and so so when we look at Colorado and you're looking at that secondary, which I find it hilarious that 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 Colorado fans are saying our secondary sucks and was getting torched. You and I have both seen that. Um, they're set, I don't think they watched their own defense because their own defense was getting absolutely lit up, running the ball, throwing oh, the ball. Yeah. Like, like it, ev in every possible way, they suck out loud, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And so I do think that you're right. And, and I think that, uh, so here, here's my question. If you're Colorado, how do you play because we heard Dion, he's a young uh, Dylan's. Dylan's a young guy. 
you know, we're going to do everything we can, can take, try to take, take, um, take advantage of his inexperience. What do you do? How are you defending that? If, if you're I'm Colorado, if I'm Colorado one, I have to go back, look at that game. And I, and I will give Dion credit a little bit on this. I did see a little clip of him where he was giving North Dakota state a lot of credit because something that they did a lot better than Colorado was they're very fundamentally in gap sound on defense. Yep. So I will, as much as I hate to, I will give Dion credit on that. I don't think it takes a genius to figure it out, but like, I think he knows that like, Hey, if we want to win this game or go win other big 12 games. Like we have to be fundamentally in gap sound on defense. We have way too many gigantic holes in the defense, whether it's in the past game. So I do think fundamentally they got to get a little bit better. I do think Colorado's in a little bit of a tough spot this week, if I'm being honest, because like, Obviously, if you want to stop Dylan, it's like, I think, like, hey, let's just drop everyone back and make the kid make a good read. I believe he can, but I, yep. if I'm a defense coordinator going against a true freshman, like, if I'm, for whatever reason, putting on the headset for Colorado as a defensive coordinator, my first thing is I'd be like, hey, I, I want to see this kid prove it. I'll drop yeah. seven. I'll drop eight. I want to see him do this. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Throw it. Like, he's got to he's yeah. got to be impeccable with, like you said, his reads and his accuracy. It's all yes. got to be there. Yes, but – the problem with that, if you're also Colorado, is that the run defense isn't that good. Yeah. Like, the run defense isn't very good. So, like, go ahead, do that. We saw against UTEP, like, for a lot of that game, like, Satterfield will just run the ball. He'll keep running. Like, as talented as Dylan Raiola is, he'll, if I, I, it's a similar way. A lot of football coaches do the same way. I'll call the same play a hundred times if I have to. Until, until you, until stop, you it. stop it. Yeah. It's, so, that's uh, going to be the problem that I think Colorado is going to be a little bit in, you know, I don't yeah, they, think this, I don't think this game's hopeless for them. Like, don't get me wrong. I do. We can talk about, I guess here in a bit, but like there are some things about Colorado that do worry me a tiny bit. Like I'll be real. Like yeah. I am, you know, but like defensively, it's like, I think they're in a tough spot because like, what do you do? Like your run yeah. defense hasn't been good enough. So you can't just, you can't just say, Oh, we're going to make the running backs beat me. Cause I think a lot of teams in the country can hand it off and beat you right now. Well, and I, I, they don't want to give us the run game because it mm -hmm. takes away the one strength that they have on that team. Because yeah. as you said, um, that Shador Sanders, uh, he's a, he, rem all right. He reminds me of Jameis Winston at Florida state. Mm -hmm. um, literally just he, there, there were two times that I feel like ball should have been intercepted. If North Dakota state had a better secondary, um, but Shador Sanders is dangerous, man. Like I don't like, Oh yeah. Travis Hunter, very dangerous. He's a top five player right now. Uh, and, and I think that he's going to be a stud at the next level too. Oh, I, um, I, I'm with you on Travis Hunter. I yeah. legitimately think there's an argument that he could be the best player in the country right now. I, I agree. I, I And I would straight up say Heisman winner. Like, uh, so yeah. I, like I'm not going to, and Jimmy Horn is also dangerous. Like, yeah, like those those three guys will beat you. So the last thing you want to do is allow us to just eat up clock, eat up clock, yeah. and just run the ball down your throat. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, they have to take away the run game, right? Like that has because that's not the game they want to yeah. get into. I I agree with you. That's what they're gonna have to do. I do think what they're gonna try and end up doing is bring pressure and. I think they're gonna do a lot of the same things they did against North Dakota State, but I do think their only shot at that game plan working is they're going to have to be a lot more fundamentally sound and not mm. just abandon gaps of the entire field. Yeah. So I do think that the game plan would be for, especially on third and 11, third and 12 is going to be like, Hey, we're bringing the house and we don't care if you know, we're bringing the house cause you can't hit a check down at that point. So go ahead, buddy. Yeah. 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 I, I, um, I feel like their defensive line was better last year than it is i mean again we're only one game in so i hear i i, I don't want to get to whatever yeah. but just, but just watching them from game one and two of last year when they played us to game mm -hmm. one to game two like I, in warren sap i'm a huge Tampa bay buccaneers fan from florida uh i hate the fact that sap is over there but i'm looking at it and i'm like they seem smaller they don't yeah. they they got zero pressure um like North Dakota State just owned the line of scrimmage the entire game on both sides of the ball. So I'm like, oh yeah, I, I like their pass rush doesn't doesn't scare me in the least, especially with our offensive line. Um, and so yeah, I, I'm I'm really curious on what they'll do defensively, and I and I agree with what you're saying. So when we look at let's go to the uh, let's go to our defense, to their offense. Uh, you know, I got a lot of Husker fans screaming that 
we didn't get sacks against UTEP, which we did. Let's just be clear. They just didn't stack up. Um, we, but there, the guys, we didn't blitz. We know that for a fact. There was zero yeah. blitzes that happened the entire game. The guys were in the backfield and getting home. Well, uh, yeah, home. and that's and that's the other thing. If you're a Husker fan listening to this and you've said that, I want you to know that, like, as someone who, granted, it's at a high school level, but as someone who is coaching a very similar offense to what UTEP is running this year, like, there, it's got, you're not going to get a lot of sacks against that because they're getting the ball out so quick. Yeah, yep. And, and that quarterback I mean? is reading, that quarterback is reading that blitzer, right? So, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many times um as blitzer but the pressure they're reading that guy coming off the end and many times i mean it was last second that he would get the ball to the running yeah. back and the in the poor quarterbacks both of them just got lit up i don't know how many times right and so yeah yeah it, it, that that type of offense it's difficult like you're saying to get the ball i mean how many let's just Tom Brady. Why was Tom Brady the hardest person to sack? Because he didn't hold the ball, but for two seconds yeah. at the most. Yes. yes. And so when you get the ball out quickly, you can't really sack. So everything is about pressure at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, that's the other thing is like to get to Colorado now, that's the exact opposite of what we're going to see this week. Shador yeah. Sanders is going to hold that ball for as long as humanly possible. And I'll be real with as crazy as that does sound like it works for him. So like, I'm not like, Hey, with all the talent that you seem to have right now at the skill positions and you don't seem to have that talent at the offensive line, hey, if you can take the beating, which I guess we'll see if he can, but like I'd hang on to that ball as long as I can too because it's a tough task for any DBs in the country to cover for that long. Yep. Like zone coverage for that long, like that's that's what's going to be tough. So like and again to give Colorado a little bit of credit, like get the ball in Shador's hands and just wait if he can hold if he can just if he can avoid sacks for a little bit he has the arm talent and it's just so hard to cover for that long especially against such talented playmakers and i hate giving them any credit in the world but yeah, I, I, yeah. i'm also trying to look at it objectively a little bit that's how i view football is i try and take you know the colors on the uniform out and just try and look at it as a chess match a little bit and it's like they got some good chess pieces at their skill positions. <laughs> yeah, at one one thousand percent. That's what makes them. That's what makes them dangerous. Yeah. And and that's why I say like it reminds me of Jameis Winston at Florida State because it's I'm gonna run around as long as possible and bl just play sandlot football. You know what I mean? Just wait for somebody to get open or throw them open. Because yeah, man, those two guys, especially Jimmy Horn and Travis Hunter, are just lethal. Yeah. And so I'm hoping. That our defensive line be one, you can rotate, rotate, rotate. Our defensive line is so deep. And so fresh legs, they're not going to be running that up tempo offense like you talked about, where you have to keep those big guys on the field. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be able to rotate those guys in and out. So I'm hoping that we get home a ton. And like you said, we just you just wear out Shador Sanders because that's the only way you, you win. Cause I don't see this as if if we have to go to a shootout, I as much faith as I have in Dylan Riola. Um, our offense does have to be balanced. Um, I 100% agree with you. So we don't we don't want to play that. We don't want to play that game. So if you are Nebraska, if you are Tony White, what are you doing to to at best mitigate? Now here the good thing is is we played them last year. It's not like this is new to us. What do you do to kind of mitigate the the especially Jimmy Horn, Travis Hunter, and make everybody else beat you? I definitely think especially with Travis Hunter. We just bracket coverage the crap out of them. And if basically what if for if anyone in the audience does know is how I would do this is I would have a center or center, geez, a corner try and take basically be pressed up right on Travis Hunter, taking away that outside. And I'd I'll literally have a safety, especially on big downs, like hey, it's third and nine. I'm gonna have that safety. And basically all you're doing is bracketing, and that's just the corner trying to take away the outside, safety's trying to take away the inside, basically double them up. Yep. That's exactly what I said on the live stream for yeah. us and uh, the UTEP live stream was was you, you you bracket them and you make everybody else beat you. Yes, that that's what I would do a hundred percent. Just make everybody else beat you. Yeah, it's it. I, Steve Merrick of Rivals uh, just posted on Twitter a video um, of North Coast State, Oklahoma, uh, North Coast State, and Colorado, and that right side for Colorado was just getting manhandled like so he was showing that 
uh, short fourth down where they got the turnover at North Dakota did. Yeah. Um, and the play before that, the right guard gets absolutely blown up and, and uh, the nose gets in there. And then the very next play on that fourth down and in, in a foot, um, the right tackle gets absolutely dismantled yeah. and they get in there. And so it's like, if, if I'm Colorado, like, and all you're seeing on Twitter is these Colorado fans just talk absolute trash about our defensive line as if they're, they're not good. And I'm like, dude, if I'm yeah. a Colorado fan, I'm absolutely terrified of that offensive yeah. line. So like something that you see a lot of football coaches say, right? This is a saying that you'll see from like, Middle school to high school, even up to the college level, is it's like, hey, if you can't block them, read them, right? If you can't block them, make them be the read keep. Well, we saw UTEP try and do that to Ty Robinson. They tried a couple times to make Ty <laughs> Robinson a read keep. That man is too big, too powerful, and too fast for his size to be, make him a read keep. And that's not Colorado's offense anyway, as you know, doing a ton of like zone reads. But like, yep. good, good luck with that. Good yeah. luck with that. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing too is like, Ty Robinson last year was out for the first half because of that late hit yeah. or whatever it was against Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He missed the whole entire first half against mm -hmm. Colorado. And so it's like, nah, man, big dudes coming. And, and by the way, like, um, so we live here in Lincoln and, and we go to everything that, that you can possibly go to. My son and I went to the open practice and Ty Robinson well, I, comes, yeah. comes right up to my son. Right. And he's giving an honor. He's talking to him. That dude, his hands are like the size of toasters, dude. Like he is a big mountain of a dude. Like, like uh Nash Hutmacher's big, right? But Ty Robinson's just tall. Mm -hmm. He is a monster. Uh, and I cannot imagine as a quarterback, like I'm thinking about that safety that UTEP had. He was untouched coming in yeah. there and just got completely just blows people and i'm like dude why why in the world would you not make sure that that guy is not at least the guy getting blocked yeah oh i 100 percent agree with you 100 percent agree with you that's not the man that if you're gonna try and read anyone on this he's not the guy <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 are your so you said earlier in the in the in this uh video you said hey like so here here are the things though that that do worry me. So we're talking, of course, Shador and, and Travis Hunter. Are there anything else that you're like, man, just as a Husker fan, this has me, has me nervous. I will say it kind of just all goes back to Shador and Travis and Jimmy Horn is ultimately that's about the only thing that worries me, but there's different parts of that that worry me. I am a little bit worried about how we cover the middle of the field, particularly like later in the play. Okay. I do think we're a lot more athletic at linebacker and Hey, I love Nick. I love Luke Reimer and I love love Nick Henrich. I've had him on my show before. So if you're hearing this, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. But I don't think I'm breaking news here that you guys weren't the most athletic linebackers in the world. I don't yeah. think I'm going to hear an argument from either of them on that. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. So I do think we are more athletic at linebacker this year. But I am still a little bit worried about, hey, we're covering a hook zone. And, oh, crap, we got Jimmy Horn running a 10-yard dig. I am a little bit worried about trying to keep up with him a little bit. Yeah. particularly like later in that play like as the play develops like hey we're talking three four five seconds before that ball gets out i start to get a little bit worried yeah i the the defensive line has to get home right and any sort of blitz like has has to get home like last year there's a video that that colorado fans are sharing all over twitter of uh of whoever whoever was number seven on defense last year um, completely whiffs like they they've got Shador. They, the whole pocket breaks down. Shador uh, boots out. He's looking. He's looking. Uh, number seven, who I I can't even think of who that was last year. Just he's got him dead to rights. Goes to hit him. Falls off of him. Then here comes Nash and Ty, and and they at the same time kind of like he just kind of weaves around them and tosses the ball uh, to Dylan Edwards. And it's a touchdown, right? And so it's like yeah. those types of things can't happen because th those guys on the back end, now I will say this, not having Dylan Edwards this year is going to hurt Colorado all day long. Like they can, they can act like it's not, yeah. but that run game is not there. It's just not mm -hmm. offensively oh, yeah. and the running back. Oh, I a hundred percent agree with you. I think Dylan Edwards is a huge loss for Colorado. I, I think it's huge. So, so that the secondary and the linebackers have to be, 
has a lot of spatial awareness. Yeah. And Malcolm Hartzog, I love the guy. Um, I think he's great. If he if he is taller, I think he plays in the NFL. But mm -hmm. it's 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 his size, I think, that really hurts him. And I would say he's the one piece on that back end that that makes me a little nervous. Not because he can't cover, but because of those like what we saw against UTEP, that kind of he kind of panics because I think he knows he has a size disadvantage. You know what 100%. I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And, so, and, and so that he's the only one. Isaac Gifford uh, isn't the biggest guy in the world either, but he is taller. And and I just feel like Isaac Gifford headhunts. So it's one of those things where yeah, he's going to yeah, lay yeah. the wood. If you oh, I, love, I, I, I love that guy, man. I love that guy. I, I know <laughs> we all, I know we all do, but I had to throw that in there. I love, I love Isaac Gifford. I did, dude, here's the other thing. This team, uh, the Huskers this year, especially for me are easy to like, like yeah, every yeah, yeah, yeah. player. It's just like, man, you just like them, man. They're just good yeah. dudes. They're working hard. They hold each other accountable. There's just so much there. And Matt rule, my God, like I, it, they should have a winning record and go to a bowl this year. So hear that. But it's like, I want to see my son, my, my nine-year-old son wants so badly. Like he's like, he's like, I'm going to be a Husker one day. Like I'm going to be a Husker one day. Yeah. And if that happens, I pray that Matt rule is the coach. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, I, I'll tell you right coach. now, you might not know this about me, but I might be the biggest Matt rule fan in the entire world. I just, <laughs> everything about him. I love as someone who has aspirations of like, I'm going to be a head high school football coach one day. That's been a goal since I've been a child. Right. Okay. Like, there's so many things that I'm directly stealing from him. I have no, you know, I'll admit that to the world. Like I'm stealing a lot of things directly from him, how he runs certain things, how he talks. Like I've been around a lot of great coaches in my time on earth here. And like, he takes a lot of good aspects from all of them and puts them into one. And that's, I, I, I I'm one of the biggest Matt real fans in the entire world. I promise you that. Yeah, I, I am too, man. I 100% I agree with you. Well, all right. So as we wrap this up, let's give some predictions. All right. Um, what do you see the game? You know, who's the winner? What do you kind of see that that score being? Um, I'll give you mine as well. Um, and then do you have like a key to the game? It's like, hey, we win this game if this happens. Yeah. Okay. So this this may seem kind of, I guess obvious here, but I got two like key to the games. Okay. My big two is one eliminate explosive plays. I we've kind of talked about that at nauseum today. So I don't, don't think I really need to get too far into that of just like, Hey, Colorado is dangerous, especially if they get momentum. That's what yep. does worry me is if yep. they're going. And I'll tell you right now, I'll tell the entire audience, everyone, Colorado is going to have, a really big play. It, it may end up being a touchdown. They might score a 60 yard touchdown. I'll tell you that right now. They're going to have explosive plays. What we can't let that happen is let one turn into, okay, now we go three and out and then they go get another one. Yep. So we yep. got to limit those explosive plays. And again, I'm telling you, they're going to have one or two really big ones throughout. That that's game. just who they are. That's yeah, their makeup. The, the, I think that I do think if they go play Georgia, I think they go lose by 70 but I do think they end up with a really big explosive play in that game. You know, yeah. like they can do that to anybody. Well, I think they did it to Oregon, even though they got blown yeah, out by yeah, Oregon yeah. last year. Yes. I think they still had one big explosive play. So, yeah. So I think limiting those explosive plays and the other one and Nebraska fans know this all too well, hang on to the dang football. And yes, <laughs> that would be the key for every game, but I'll tell you why I feel like this is especially important this week is with Colorado. We cannot give them any extra possessions. Yep. whatsoever obviously yep. our game plan is going to be control the clock keep the ball out of Shador's hands right we cannot be giving them any short fields any extra possessions any of that we want to yep. keep the ball as much as we can so if we're throwing interceptions or fumbling and giving them the ball man because that's the thing is like with Colorado you just got to get stops against these guys and they're going to be hard to stop if we're giving them an extra two or three possessions a game like Yep. They could easily turn those two or three extra possessions into touchdowns. Then we're looking at 21 points right there. Yep. I agree. Um, I would say that those would, those are my two keys as well. And, and, and the thing is, is like, we are North Dakota state 2.0, but with much better players. Yeah. We've got way better skill players. We've got a way better offensive line. We got a way better defensive line. We play similar games, except our quarterback doesn't run. He can actually and 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 Cam from North Dakota State 
he's still a good quarterback. Hear me. I, the, but yeah. Dylan Riola will be a pro. Like he's he's a stud. So there's a difference there. And the game was still tight for Colorado against North Dakota State. And so I think we play our game. We play very physical. We absolutely own the 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 line of scrimmage and be in the trenches. And I think the game definitely goes in the favor of 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 Nebraska. And I I agree with you. Colorado's going to have a they're going to have a big play or two, but it cannot be big play than three and out, right? Like that's yeah. that is such the drive killer. And like you said, you, you cannot give them extra possessions. So that can't be interceptions, can't be fumbles, uh, can't be three and outs. Like we've yeah. got to we've got to make sure we have extended drives that are just eating up clock, even if it doesn't amount to a touchdown. You've got to eat up five to six to seven minutes of time, you know, a series. Yeah. Like you just got to. 100%. So what what do you give your your score prediction for? My score prediction, I've gone back and forth on this a lot. And not back and forth on who I think is gonna win. <laughs> I'm pretty steadfast on I think Nebraska should win this game. Now I'll tell you, would I be absolutely flabbergasted, shocked, and angry if they end up losing? Yeah, I'll be upset because it's Colorado, but like I'm not one of those guys that's oh, the season's over. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's I think Nebraska's a lot better team than Colorado, but I do think in a lot of aspects, Colorado matches up well against us. Right. Yeah. But I, 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 I do agree. think I do think Nebraska is going to win this game. What I've gone back and forth on is how much I think they're going to win by. So what I've kind of came to is I'm going Colorado 23. Nebraska 27. That's where I'm going with four point win, one possession game. We got to get one of these one possession wins under okay. our belt. And I'm, I'm predicting it this time. I, I like that. I'm, I've got 27, 21. Um, I, I, I think that I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be like it was last year in that first half. That first half, it was what three, nothing. Yes. Yeah, something um, like that. And, and, I think that we come out in the second half and that run game, that offensive line begins to start blowing open holes and, and they just start leaning on their defense, that defensive line. And I think that we chew up clock. Um, and so, uh, but I do think they have some explosive plays because at the end of the day, I, I do think you're going to find two, two guys that are explosive and they're going to score mm-hmm. one, if not two times. And so, that's why I'm like, I, you know, I'm not going to downplay that, but I do think that uh, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be in the 30s. I don't think either team scores in the 30s because I think that our run game eats up too much clock for that to happen. So, um, well, dude, thanks so much for coming on with me. I really appreciate it. Love your insight. Love following you on Twitter. Again, give us the, the Twitter handle and the YouTube uh, handle. I'll also have those in the description. Uh, on Twitter, I've actually made it pretty easy. On all my social media, like YouTube, Twitter, and I also have a Facebook. It's just at the BA Coaches Show. It's pretty – type that in anywhere, pretty much any social media. I do have a TikTok. I don't do a very good job of being active on there, but I'm yeah. going to try and start being better. It's just hard to – I have a hard time coming up with one-minute clips. <laughs> I hear you. What, so also, too, I just saw you announce you're going to be on 1620 every Monday morning yes, with Sharp and Hammer. Every- Yes, every Monday morning, 8 a.m. Uh, that just got announced like today, like a couple hours before we're recording this. I hopped on their show probably three weeks ago, something like that. And hey, turns out I killed it. So they're going to have me back on. So Dude, I guess that's I awesome. myself on the back a little bit. I don't know. They hit me up one day and uh, Nick Hanley hit me up one day and was like, hey, you want to come on tomorrow morning? I'm like, sure. <laughs> Sick, <laughs> guess, dude. That, well, congratulations so, on that, man. Yeah, that's awesome. You, man. Even if you don't become a high school head coach, maybe you become a talking head for somebody with the Huskers and you start to build something here, man. Like that's, hey, I'm, I mean, I'm all about it. I'm having a lot of fun doing this, man. It's a lot of fun. My YouTube page is kind of like growing like way faster than I expected it to. Like yeah, I know man. like in a lot of people's like range, like, Hey, I'll give you for instance, you got a lot bigger channel than me, but I just started making Husker videos in like May. Yeah, so dude, like, I, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> and the thing is, is I just like, I don't claim to be anybody. I'm just a fan who loves the loves yeah. the team and loves to support them. And I love Husker fans. I love, uh, you know, and so I'm like, dude, I just want to see a bigger community because I love yeah. the hate that I get on my channel from other teams that are like, how 
this loser team has how many YouTube pages and fan pages right. and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's right. because we're the best fan base in the country. So hundred like, percent. Okay. My, my little channel has gotten some of that too. And it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. Well, dude, thanks so much. Enjoy your insight guys. Go follow him, subscribe to his channel and uh, dude, I'll be listening to you on 1620. So have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll talk to you later on.